This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. everybody it's alex it's alex bennett it is the ramble and the ramble goes on until midnight uh in about uh, 25 minutes from right now we'll go hit up the citizens panel and hear what people have to say to us on a, a very special format for talk in the meantime we got a guest tonight so we better check in on him let's just dial him up okay let me see here i always like to always surprise stephen pearl okay here we go Let's see here. We're dialing him up. He always answers in some strange way. Ready for business. Ah, yeah. See, we're recording already because I figured you said something. Amazing. We're on. It's it's that that spontaneous. It's incredible. I thought you'd be saying some funny stuff or something like that. Oh, sorry. Sorry to disappoint you. Marilyn. Sorry, I'm in the middle of something here. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. Did we okay. inter- did we interrupt you? That's all right. Hold on. What the hell is that? Damn it! Oh, screw it. Anyway, we're back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, how are you, my friend? Good, good. How are you, my good buddy? What's going on? Oh, Just I... sitting here on Parchment Farm, waiting for something to happen. Ah, uh, yes. Well, thank you, Mose Allison. Um, <laughs> so, uh, how are you? How have things been going? Things are good. Uh, we took a, a cat, a sick cat, to the vet, and I was presented with a three hundred dollar bill, and I paid it because I'm a chump and I love animals. I'm the animals chump. You, you so, know, uh, used, from that, that could have gone in my car or weed or something else. But I love the cat so much. It, it used to be that you could get yourself, uh, you know, you had a sick cat or something. You took him to the vet, and the vet handed you the bill, and you wondered how the vet made a living. Okay, yeah. <laughs> a long time ago. Be- because it was so cheap, right? Uh-huh. That you you just it 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 was amazing how cheap. I mean, yeah. And then all of a sudden, I mean, I haven't had an animal in years now, but I've been told by people, oh, I just uh, had my cat uh, taken care of because he was sick and blah 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 blah. How much did it uh-huh. cost you? Two thousand dollars. Jumping both. And if I it go, was that much, I would have said, well, I'll see you in heaven. <laughs> at what point do you let the cat die? You know, I mean, I know. You, you, but they know they've got you by the balls. Uh, oh, I, sure. I just I just got out of a storage locker in Petaluma. Now I'm in a storage locker in Santa Rosa, but it's cheaper. And it's uh-huh. a thing with a storage locker that they make their entire business on people who go, well, it's in there. I guess it's in there, and they pay for it month to month on this, uh, you know, yeah. credit card thing that rolls over, and they forget about it. And then, like with me, fourteen years later, you say, "How many thousands of dollars did I spend on that fucking <laughs> exactly. goddamn thing?" Well, just, the same thing is, it somewhere. and it's because you don't want to move it. You know, you you don't want to. Do, so, a cat or a dog is the same thing in that way. In that, when you bring uh-huh. that dog or cat in, and they're sick and. They're, they're on the edge of life or whatever. Uh, they can charge you just about anything they want to, and if you love that animal, and most people do, because an animal yeah. is a, is an integral part of your life. In fact, without a doubt, your pet probably knows more about you than your girlfriend does. You know, probably does. And seventeen psychiatrists, the top team of <laughs> top panel of <laughs> yeah. brain freakers. and so they've got you by the by the so called balls. Because sure. what are you going to do? You're going to let the cat die? No, this is your best ah, friend nah, or your dog. You know, I'm a, I'm a sucker for animals, and we, we did take them to the cheap place, so that's the scary part. So all and, uh, you know, in the old days, you could pay for with a dollar fifty and a book of King Corn stamps, but now it's, it's all yikes. of a, all of a sudden the price goes sky high because they know they got sure. you. They you got know, you, yeah, they, they've but, got uh, you by the. You know, it was it was worth it. <laughs> yeah, they've got you by the cojones. Uh, and got you by the cojones, man. They got them in a sling. They got them in a vice, and they're starting to squeeze. Yeah. So <laughs> Here how, you go. Uh, so how, up, how, it up. You like that animal, don't you? So yes, I do. Wait a minute. How much did this uh, did this uh, cat cost you again? Three uh, hundred? About three hundred. Yeah. yeah. And what was the problem that had to be solved? Oh, he had the he had the worms, and he had the uh, what else? He had the fleas, and he had some other things, and they had to give him shots, and he just he, he was. He was losing hair and gaining weight. We thought he was had cancer or something, but he didn't. But uh, yeah. but he just they just ran the test on him and uh, 
they put the vacuum to my wallet. They saw they turned it on. Jesus Christ! But uh, I, I can't yeah. remember who I talked to recently. Oh yeah, my business manager Gary has a dog yeah. got very yeah, were- very sick, and he took him to the vet, and I think the bill came to seven thousand dollars. Oh, 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 my God. You could send a parent to college for that money. Now, Jesus Christ. And, uh, now, you can buy you can buy cat health insurance or pet health insurance, I think. There are companies that do that now. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, and, and and so I, I mean, you could do that, I suppose, if you yeah. are counting on your animal getting really sick. You know, yep. how, how, how old's the cat? The cat, we didn't even know, but we we, uh, we thought he was like 10 or something because he's a black cat with speckles of gray, and he kind of walked a little slow, but they said he was like six or seven years old. So uh, that's not so bad. They said his health other from that was really good, so we just had to take care of all the other crap but after $300 later, and uh, there you go. So, uh, wow. <laughs> I'm a bit poor now. How well, you, you, go you, car, you, you actually got away cheap, I think. You know, I mean, compared yeah, well, to... If that's cheap, I don't want to see expensive. Just bend over. We'll stick the vacuum up your butt now. I mean, I go to my uh, I go to my doctor or dentist or whatever, and just the copay alone comes to money like that. You know. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's. I mean, health insurance is ridiculous for humans. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I have a health insurance <laughs> policy through. Well, I have Medicare. But then you have to have a secondary because Medicare only takes care of twenty percent, eighty percent, right? So the other twenty yeah, percent has to come from somewhere. And because my wife works, uh, she has a health insurance policy where she is, which is Oxford, and so that's really good because that's our what we call our supplemental. That's the other twenty percent. However, however, there's like a something like a thousand dollar uh deductible or something like that maybe even more as i looked at it and Yikes. you know uh I, in all the time that we've had oxford insurance they have never had to pay out a penny for me uh, my wife loves to go to doctors it's a hobby okay yeah. <laughs> But we've never, I, I'm, they've never paid one penny. I, I do get the prescription drugs, however. And then I uh, have to good. fight like hell for them. Uh-huh. Uh, there was this one, one medicine that I was taking because I had irritable bowel syndrome. And um, it was called Zyfaxin. And it was, I asked my doctor, I said, how do we get rid of irritable bowel, bowel syndrome? He says, well, there's really no cure for it. He said, but there is this drug that kind of helps. So I got the drug. Well, when I first got the drug, I didn't know that I could get my doctor to go to the health company or the insurance company and say, hey, he needs this, and then get it for a lower price. So I paid full price for it, and it was $300, okay? So now it's a couple of years later, and I now want this stuff again. And they say, well, you have to get another one of these exceptions or whatever you have to get to get the drug. And uh, so I'm going, well, I wonder how much more they're paying than, you know, than what it is. And uh-huh. we had to go through hoops. I mean, they just wouldn't give it to me. And, my, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm having the trots. I'm, my stomach is roiling and all of that. I go up to the uh, drugstore and I say, how much do I want to pay for this? Now, remember, it was, two, it was 300 before, right? A couple yeah, of years earlier. Yeah. The, the uh, uh, pharmacist looks at the, uh, at the computer Eyes roll, bug please. out, eyes bug out, comes back to me and writes it on a piece of paper, and it's $2,100. Hello, kill me now. Just kill me now. That's for 60 fucking pills, all right? Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. That's all. Yeah. So, not uh, fair, not fair. Uh, I couldn't get this stuff. Uh, and then I found out, I tried, um, one day I was, for some reason or another, I tried some probiotics. And my IBS cleared up. I mean, better than it had ever been before. Even with the the the, the twenty one hundred dollar pills. So this is this is this is what happens with insurance companies and with pharmaceutical companies. And now we got a president who wants to make them all rich. 
Exactly. Oh, mm. God. Uh, I'm lucky I have Putin care. What, you have cold? We take you out back. Boom, boom. You don't have cold anymore. It's quite simple. What, you got the flu? Boom, boom. You, are, you don't have flu anymore. Hey, Putin care. It's cheap and it works. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cheap and it works. Uh, how do you, how, what kind of medical uh, um, stuff do you have? I mean, how do you take care of it? I'm you? lucky. I have medi It covers everything, and I hope I... I hope whenever my time comes, I have until the end. Now, what is Medi-Cal exactly? It's not, is it like Medicaid? I don't know, but it covers all my pills and my hospital and doctor visits, so uh, and do you that, pay, that's pretty good. In fact, I, I went yesterday for a checkup, and they said it was perfect. So do, you pay, do you pay anything so, for it? Or, just not a cent, not a penny. So not a penny? Not a How do I get that? Nope. How to get on that? Well, you got to live in California and let them go. You crazy? Well, everybody <laughs> goes. Oh well, Alex, you've got Medicare. You're, you know, you're, you're sucking out life out of the system financially. And I'm going. No, I'm not. Because Medicare, oh, Medicare, sure. Medicare, they take out of your Social Security, and it costs me 110 dollars a month. Uh huh. So you know, it's not like I'm. It's free. You know. Uh huh. So. I, you know. Well, so far, Medi-Cal hasn't cost me a thing, so uh, hopefully uh, when my time comes, I'll just cover till the end. But yeah. After that, stop me with newspapers. How did you, how'd you, get, how'd you, how'd you get a Medi-Cal? Do you have to prove you only make so much money or something? Yeah, you do that, and you do this, and you show them your psychiatric records, and they know, oh, this man's too crazy to work at a cement mixer, so they, then they give it to you. And oh, <laughs> they wow. They give you a pat on the ass and send you out the door. Wow, I wish I could get that, but I'm I'm well, I'm it stuck took with. It took me a while, but I kept fighting. I'm stuck with Medicare, which ain't bad, by the way. That but ain't it, bad. But it's uh, but it should take care of a hundred percent, not eighty. You know. Yes, it should. It should. Because that it's other twenty percent. Uh, here's the thing: my my wife's company pays uh, Oxford. I don't know, fifteen hundred bucks a month, two thousand bucks a month for our insurance, uh -huh. and and they pick it all up. But it's our insurance. And uh, we're only using 20%. They should be uh -huh. actually, because we are using it as a supplemental, be charging her company less. But no, it's the same amount uh -huh. as they would charge if, you know, whatever. So. Sons of bitches. They should hang by the rope. It's such bullshit. Such bullshit. It is bullshit. Complex and, fucking crap that doesn't have to be that way. Didn't comedians? Did, wasn't there a time when comedians were trying to get together as kind of a union so they could get insurance? Oh yeah, I remember that. <laughs> there was there was a Led Zeppelin. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's create. We're going to form a comics union. Blah blah blah. Yeah, sure, sure. So, well, but, the only but reason to, bunch it, of in the, world. the only reason to create a comedians union was so that you could all get on an insurance policy for that yeah. union. You know, which would have covered you for that. Doesn't mean you have to go in and you know hold the uh, the club owners' feet to the flames because God knows they don't want to pay money. Uh, yeah, that's but, true. But nevertheless, I think that you know that it maybe wasn't the worst idea in the world because it gives you a massive. Uh, think... Well, you could also have you could have uh, uh, what do you call it uh, uh, retirement programs, things like that. You know, and since the average comedian retires at uh, twenty six. Uh, <laughs> what's the average life of a comedian? I'm, I'm not talking about physical life. I'm talking about no, the, <laughs> these days, probably like a year and a half. You know, then somebody else comes along. So, so it's longer than a it's porn. A, it's lo longer than a porn actress. Yeah, a little bit longer. Not much longer. Yeah, maybe half a reel longer. They say the average porn actress lasts three months in the business. Yeah, oh God, three months. Yeah, I thought it was at least a year. Yeah, no, but, but well, Savannah. <laughs> yeah, and then you poor just, girl blew her brains out. Poor little, poor little satan, satanical, satanically possessed little bitch. Yeah, so uh, you know, but I mean, um, uh, I, I, I it, 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 there's there's a certain uh, shelf life for comedians, and either you've got a great career and you keep doing it until you drop dead, like George Burns. Yeah, or you're out of it, you know, before you know it, you know, because it yeah. it's not paying the bills, and you've got to go to work for Dad's uh, car dealership. Yeah, you know, uh, or the third option is your Perry Kurtz. So anyway, <laughs> as long as there's an assisted living facility that has an amateur night, that boy will work. Let he, me tell you this: this is a guy I was mentioning him uh, to. I was talking to uh, to Ruben yesterday, and Perry Kurtz. I it came up in my mind. I guess that's why he came up today, because his name is burned in my brain. 
Uh, 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 Can I easily say that Perry Kurtz was maybe the worst comedian of all time? He's he's up there or down there or wherever it is. He's in that he's in that that pantheon, okay. And but this guy just keeps working, you know. If it's if if it's a (laughs) if, if it's an assisted living facility, Perry Kurtz will be there, you know. They pay you with mandates in Jericho. That's what I'm saying. The exposure. The guys like Burns last forever. The guys who've been in the, go in the business and stay in it for one year, and then there's Perry Kurtz. Then there's Perry Kurtz. There's that third <laughs> category. It's called the Perry Kurtz. Well, Perry, yeah. yeah, but that the assisted living uh, circuit is quite good because the audience keeps changing. You don't have to change the material at all. Every time yeah. <laughs> you go back, everyone's dead. There's a new audience. So, hey, I can do the same material. It's yeah. assisted living. Just just write forty five minutes of crap, and most of them can't hear it anyway. Yeah, but you can't you know, play, you, assist, play you, the assisted living circuit. They're all over the place. You you, you can't do with those uh, things that start out with uh, "Did you ever?" Because some of them <laughs> some of them can't ever again. So yeah, you know, can't ever again, and we don't remember. Yeah, yeah, and I'm one of them. You know, I'm I'm, I'm, getting, I'm there. getting there. I'm seventy seven. Who's going to take care of me when I get? I I didn't have any kids, so I can't go live with them. You yeah, know, they can't do they can't when the money case, and, and and I have a certain amount of money that I'm living on and I'm on a fixed income. And and if I knew when I was going to die, then I would spend it appropriately. Yeah, but let's say I, I live tomorrow, to, I can blow the whole thing. There's going to be a hell of a party or another 12 years. Holy shit. Yeah. So my question is, you know, uh, do I do I hold on to my money now because tomorrow I'm going to need it? Or may I uh, yeah. might I be dead tomorrow? Yep. You know. And uh, and 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 leave all this money behind to nobody else except maybe my wife. Who you in, leave, it in, lady, leave it to me. What the hell? But in her case, suppose she goes before me. They, you, know. you never know. It's a, it's a, it's a total gamble. It's you know what it is? We, we sit here and stare at each other every night saying, which one of us is going to go first? <laughs> because we're at that age where that's going to happen. You know, yeah, I could get. Well, my she, wife's twelve years younger than me, so I know I'm going to go first. I, I, I darn well better. She's how old? She's uh, let's just say she's a lot younger than me. Okay, <laughs> a lot, how much? How much? A lot, a lot younger. Come on. Well, okay, okay, I'm sixty-one. She's whatever twelve years younger than that is. She's, yeah, uh, but you know, 49. she could. Hey, you never know. You know, you never know who's going to get hit by a runaway egg truck. Anything could fucking happen. Yeah. How old did your father <laughs> live to be? He had a heart attack, didn't he? He, no, it was my father. He blew his brains oh, out. Oh, blew his brains yeah, out. Well, well that, he shot himself. Well, then that... <laughs> it was a heart attack. That, that was no heart attack. That Then that... Uh, blowing your brains out, does that count as uh, a certain age for mortality? <laughs> I think it counts as lead poisoning. <laughs> 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 he, was, he was 83 or near 83. Or oh, okay. Like that. All right, so... Another, so, another case of too much too soon. So you've got a long time before you commit suicide, is what I'm saying. You're 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 in good shape. As long as there's one person on the planet who is pissed off by my existence, I'm sticking around. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, can, let me ask you this question. Wait was, the last one dies, man. Wait a minute. He was 83 years old, right? Yeah, he was 83 years okay. old. Okay. What at 83 makes you say, I think it's time to blow my brains out? I mean, wouldn't you do that he, when he, you're younger? He woke up next to my mother so many, so many times. <laughs> he goes, this is it. But he was, I know he was sick, and he, he had, uh, what do you call it, ulcerated uh, something, colitis, which is... All these little, I don't know, he, I, yeah. he, he was uncomfortable, and he had two knee replacements, and I think he just had enough, because when he was alive, he liked to fly planes and sail boats and ski, he was Another very active. Word. Oh, that's, that, so, that, that's he bad. That's, he couldn't do that anymore. And when he had to yeah. sell, he, he did it after a year after he had to sell his boat, which he loved more than anyone in the family. Oh, so, that, uh, that's, yeah, that's why he I... had to sell the boat, he said, that's yeah. enough. That's, that's why I remain inactive. Because, <laughs> it's best to not be active. Because because if I'm active and then I like I, I now have a torn meniscus and a few other little things that hurt me here and there, you know, and uh-huh. if, if you're really an active person, that really depresses you. In my case, since <laughs> I'm not an active person, so I got a torn meniscus. I just won't walk. I never do you anyway, go. you know. Um, but uh, you, with your father being an active person and then all of a sudden having all these medical problems, I can see why he blew his brains out. 
Yeah, I can see it too. You know, yeah. and waking up next to my mother every day will do it. Uh, so, how, you know, how did uh, how did you know. how did you react? I think I may have asked you this before, but tell me if I'm redundant. How did you how did you react to that? That's you know that's kind of a life changing. Well, first they told me he was dead, and I, you know I was like, whoa, that's fucked up. So I was in shock, and then uh, you know I knew he was old; it could happen any time. Yeah. And then uh, they when they when I flew in that night or the next night, whenever it was, uh, they told me what happened. And, Holy shit! It was just like a shock. What they didn't but want to. He t- was kind of a distant guy, so it, yeah. it, it wasn't you know looking back on it, it, it kind of makes sense. So. And how did your mother react to it? So she was a train wreck to begin with. So she was even more of a tra- train wreck times a hundred. Now, how much train how, wreck cube? How much younger? Than, uh, what were the age differences between the two of them? Oh, what's he? He was, I think, a year. He was born in twenty one, and she was born in nineteen twenty two. Okay, so so, uh, so and and how long did she keep living after him? She kept living, if you call it living, uh, making everyone around her miserable. For let's see, he was he was oh four. She died in the early, late oh four. She was over uh, 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 Five, six, seven. God, I can't even fucking count. It's easy. Uh, prime numbers, prime numbers. Uh, three and a half years. About three and a half years. Uh, three and a half years. Yeah. A lot of times. Yeah, that's w- enough. Were they married to each More other? Were they married to each other forever? I mean, you know, yep. not from... 1940, 1948. Wow. The good old days when show business was really a something. Yeah. So, so uh, uh, 1948, they got married. They were always married to each other. So, th- w- yep. if he died, it was. It was almost a fait accompli that she was going to die a short time after him, because would been, yeah, it would have been nice if she died right before him. <laughs> now it's my turn. Uh, but, uh, you didn't like your mother, did you? Not here, very here, much. Here, lie down on the couch and tell me about it. <laughs> Every Mother's Day, I'd send her a "fuck you" card, but I gotta tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I dislike my mother so much. How much did you dislike her? Blah, 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 blah. Every Mother's Day, I'd send an I love you card to Leona Helmsley. I'd rather she would have been my mother. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, it, it is what it is. You know, what the hell? I was never molested, so <laughs> I got through it okay. Now, you, you, you didn't, did you like your father? Yeah, he was cool. He was all right. You know, later on, he was a bit distant. Because here, here, here was my whole thing when my father died, and he died at 59, right? Of wow. A pituitary tumor, something today they can Yikes. clear up with no problem. But yeah. anyway, he, he died at 59, and I was devastated, and I kept saying to myself the most horrible thing, why couldn't it have been my mother? Exactly. Now, it's <laughs> not the, my mother like, wasn't a horrible person or anything, but I absolutely yeah. adored my father. You know, he uh, he was yeah. something very special. You know. Yeah. So. There was I you know I respected my father and what he did and everything, but there was uh, there was no adoration there. So. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's too. It bad. was what it was. Yeah. I, mean, I was when I moved to California, I was glad. I was sad I left my dog behind, but other from that, I did the right thing. Yeah, yeah. What brought you to California? I came out here in the summer of '76 when I was just a 20 year old pup with a friend of mine whose father had died, but his credit cards were still good. So we drove out and charged everything, hotels and gas and everything, to the credit card. And we got a place in Tiburon for the summer. And it was a nice place with a view for $425 a month, two bedrooms. And uh, I just fell in love with San Francisco. I'm, man, I'd never seen anything like this. I'd never been further west than Ohio. I was in California when I was 10, but that didn't count. But uh, I just thought, and wow, this is cool. This is better than Long Island and walking around Hempstead going, hey, full fuel, let's get a slate. So I saved my pennies, and uh, I think in 79, early 79, I came out here to scope out the comedy scene yeah. for several months. The Holy City Zoo, Punchline, I, I loved the place. I made friends, blah, blah, blah. And then in late 79, I moved out for good, and I don't regret a, any of it. What was, what, I made what, all the uh, friends uh, I did, and uh, I met you, and everything. Yeah. We're kind of running out of time here, but what was the thing that made you no. become? But yes, we are. We've been talking for quite a while here. We're blabbing. Two Jews blabbing, two, baby. Two Tune Jews. in every week. Yeah, but no, but my, my question would be, what what made you become a comedian? I mean, it was because you didn't come out here a comedian, did you? Or come out to San Francisco? I, I say here because I... Not in 76, but in seven, I came out here in 79 with the, you know, the thoughts of doing... I, I'd done it in New York. I was starting to do it oh, in New okay. York. Oh, to okay. Else, okay. Okay. I came out here to do comedy, so, yeah. And, and to... To get out of New York and it, to live in San Francisco, so it, 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 San Francisco it kind of went together. Luckily, San Francisco was kind of a real mecca for people who wanted to do comedy because here was the pl- it was the place you could really learn it, and there was also a c- comic community that was willing to help you. 
you know? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I had no idea about that. I just wanted to live in San Francisco and do comedy. And then I found out, and the scene was just, you know, the 80s thing was really starting to snowball then. So, yeah, you know, the timing yeah. was just perfect, coincidentally. So, so anyway. But, yeah, yeah. I, I, and I just dug it. I loved, I loved it out here. We put uh, Stephen Pearl on the uh, <clears throat> Bennett couch. <laughs> and 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 guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We found out all about suicide and things like that, and sick cats. Sick cats and suicide. That'll be the name of today's show. Sick hey, cats let, and suicide. So listen, Part one. Let, let's get together and do this again. Not next week because it's Fourth of July week and it's a short week. But uh, maybe the week after that would be nice. Good. Huh? Color me there, Daddy. I'll be willing and ready. Ladies We're and ready and willing. Whatever. Uh, willing and Otis ready. Ladies and gentlemen. The madness that is Stephen Pearl. Thank you very much. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And here we go, folks. There we are. Aha. Okay, I did it. Got it all done. I've been having a little problems tonight. I've been a little slow at running the TV part of it. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you all. Um, uh, and, and and this is Alex Bennett. This is our um, our um, uh, ramble, and it goes until midnight tonight. And let me turn on the. Um, first of all, let me get rid of the uh, jingles and stuff like that. And then let me open up the Skype lines and see if anybody's going to call tonight. Uh, there are certain people that we don't uh, we don't have available to us tonight. Um, I found out that uh, Jeff is. Uh, uh, he's up in Massachusetts seeing his uh, daughter, I think it was. I think that was the, uh, uh, the, the thing I was told by him. Uh, he sent a note. Very nice to send it. And uh, Patrick can't, because Cat Patrick is taking some classes or something in uh, HTML and a whole bunch of crap like that, so he can't call tonight. So, uh, you know, I'm relying on the rest of you to give me a... Uh, a good ringy dingy, and I will be more than happy to talk to you. Our numbers here, if you want to find them, they're on gabnet.net, so that if you ever forget them, that's where you can find them, okay? All right. So you can find them, and that's good. Uh, that's to begin with. Now, let me turn down my audio. My audio is a little on the loud side. There we go. Uh, I hope I wasn't blasting you out. Uh, so anyway, where was I? Oh, uh, and uh, you can use Skype to call us. You go to Skype.com, download the Skype program, install it. It's very simple to install. It's free. It doesn't cost you a penny to call us. It's absolutely free. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Here's, uh, here. here's Mike calling. Hello, Mike. How are you? Hello. H hello. Boy, you call all of us now, man. You're like you're you're like a uh, uh, what we, oh gee I'm seeing just part of you there, uh, you yeah. you're, you're like uh, you're becoming like a uh, what do we call you chronic? <laughs> yeah, Sorry. turn on your camera, will you, so we can see you instead I got, of. I got, I got the camera on. Well, turn it off, turn it on again, because we can't see it. You know. There, there we go. Well, no, it's not kicking in. Try it again. It's not kicking in. Oh, boy. I think you got some problems with your Skype. You know what I would do? I'd go back and reboot your machine. I think I you... just, I just did. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, there's something, there's something wrong with the bandwidth or something tonight with you. Um, no, nothing wrong with my bandwidth or nothing. Well, uh, uh, there's some, some problem, you know, that it's not, that it's not going to your camera. It went to your camera for a short time, and then it stopped. Uh, well, okay, let me let me uh, reboot. Uh, let me uh, do something here real quick. I'll be right back. Uh, okay, all right. So anyway, somebody else give me a call so I know this thing's working tonight. Um, uh, here we go. Get here he is again. Okay, let's see here. Now there we go. Now we have a picture on you. Unfortunately, we can see you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny today? Uh, a friend of mine from New York moved out here to California. Mm-hmm. He went to JFK Airport yeah. to say goodbye to New York for the last time. Yeah. TSA stopped him because he's a diabetic. He had his needles with him. Yeah. Which he had to carry on to the uh, airplane. Well, his jackass, excuse the expression, stopped him, told him, hey, you can't come aboard with those needles. 
He goes, <laughs> why? I'm a diabetic. Here's my note. Yeah. How do I know that? It's, how do I know that's a, a doctor's or your, your true doctor? A friend of mine is just about ready to deck well, I, now, why does he? Why does he need the needles? He's a diabetic. Yeah. Okay. It, he's an insulin. He takes insulin. Right. And so the TSA guy told him, "No, you can't get on board with those needles, because those consider as a weapon." Oh, give me a break. He so he says, "Fine. You know what?" He says, "You asshole. I'm going to sue you, TSA, the state of New York, the city, and the county of New York." And you can go blow it out your ass about your job. Just get on board. So my friend of my turn goes, hey, jackass. You got to turn around and goes, fuck you in New York. <sighs> yeah. He put the ball off and got on the airplane. <laughs> so the guy just didn't want to take the chance of getting sued and getting all in all kinds of problems with that. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I, 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 you know, I, I, when's the last time there was a hijack, hijack plane? I can't remember one. You know, aren't we being a little overzealous about something of which we uh, don't really maybe have a problem? Exactly. You know, and I mean, uh, in fact, if I if you think closely about it, even internationally, there haven't been. Uh, I don't know of very many. Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, hijackings. You know, I last hijacking I think it was maybe thirty years ago. Well, I, I'm sure there's been one since. How about nine eleven? That was a hijack. True. Yes, I mean a massive hijack. But after right. that, I you know, and, and you know, somebody can call us up and say, Well, it's because we've been really Oh boy, that's delicious. Uh um, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it, that that oh well, it's because we've been so assidu you know so so guarded guarded about this that we've been able to do that. In fact, Phil will probably say exactly that. Hello, Phil. Yeah, how you doing? Yeah, you there? Hello, Phil. Yeah, hey, Mike. Yeah, we were talking about hijackings. And the, uh, yeah, the, I, uh, I I just started switching over. I went for uh, coffee first. And, yeah. Uh, I'm not drinking coffee anymore. I'm drinking Earl Grey tea. I, I like that. And I'm sleeping every night now. Yeah. Are you, you're supposed to hold up your pinky up. You're supposed to drink officially. The English yeah. says you got to hold your pinky, pinky up. Pinky up. I, uh, properly. Well, this is, <laughs> you can only do that if you've got a teacup. This is in a teacup, and so it's very hard to get your pinky up in the air. Funny thing is that uh, me, myself and uh, my father and his father yeah. always drank with their pinky up, and I think it's a hereditary thing. Well, yeah, but I think it was also because in those days you didn't have, didn't do, they didn't probably didn't do the mugs, you know. In a mug, you can't yeah. lift your pinky. If you've got a, yeah. a, a a teacup, you you can do that very easily because just one finger kind of goes yeah. in the. It, no, yeah. no, no, no. That's that's not the finger. That's not the pinky, though. That's not the pinky. Um, well, uh, you know, you, you're talking about hijacking. Yeah. Uh, I went to the DMV today because I forgot that it was my birthday, and they said every 15 years you have to go in and get a, and and take an eye exam at the DMV. I forgot to make an appointment, so I get in there, and the line is out the door at three o'clock in the afternoon. It's it's out the door, and of course I got a pee. And the restroom is, uh, it, it was said, out of order. I said, I don't care if it's out of order. I went in anyway. Yeah. Was it, by the way, what, was it out of order, or did they just do that for your ben for everybody's no, benefit? Somebody stuffed up the toilet, and, and it stayed like that uh, the whole time I was there. I now, when the you got out of line to go pee, did you tell somebody to keep your place for you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, there was a friendly crowd. <laughs> well, you know, well, you know I... Somehow, I think at, at the DMV, it is a friendly crowd because what's, what's the positive thing of getting nasty about this whole thing? You know, there's, there's no advantages to it. At post office, they get nasty. Oh, oh that's the employees. No, uh, the post office. <laughs> that's my, true. That's true. My post that's office true. is forget it, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, I, 
I know why postmen go postal. I mean, you know, they, they, it's, it's just, it's, I've, I talked to Albert. Albert worked at the post office. Yeah. And he said it was the worst job he's ever had in his life. He said, it's not so much that the job's a terrible job, but the people working it are horrible. Yeah. You know, yeah. they have a horrible attitude. They're, they're all pissed off, you know, and. Well, you know, if you worked uh, a job where every every person you greeted, instead of saying hi, you had to say next. Oh, by the way, Kev, uh, uh, Brian's in the car. Yeah. Hello, Brian in a, a mobile. Yeah. Yes. Uh, hello. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you fine. Yeah. Yep. Now, you're Good. wearing headphones, Brian, right? That is correct. Bluetooth. Uh, are, oh, are those headphones cover both your ears, though? That is correct. Blue, you know, uh, they're Blue Tiger Elite. Ah, available well, on Amazon. Nice. Although in California, you know that's a uh, that's a violation. Uh, uh, oh yes, having yeah. having both. I, I don't know about your state, Ryan, but I know in California, having both only have having both your ears, ears plugged up. They make yeah. them too. Blue Tiger makes the one ear one ear headphones as well with the attached yeah uh, cool. microphone. You both are available on Amazon.com. Ah, but uh, the two ears is illegal in California. Yes, California it is. Go fuck itself. <laughs> yeah. What? I, what? You're, Brian, uh, you're Br Br Pennsylvania or? Brian's got attitude. Major attitude. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Kevin. Especially when it pertains to fellacious figures of authority who think they have it. Yeah. Yeah. Like Trump, you, for example. Yeah. You won't like be able to pull example. the black card if you get pulled over, Brian. No, but know, anyway, so uh, anyway, uh, and, and we're joined by Kevin as well. Um, uh, 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 the thing I was talking about was. That we are we a little too sensitive at the airports because after all, when's the last time you heard about a major uh, hijacking? And it's not because we've we made life inconvenient for everybody. Uh, uh, that that hasn't that wouldn't slow somebody down if they wanted to blow up a plane. It's well, just, that can get to Cuba for ninety nine dollars from Miami on well, JetBlue. No, you, you, you can't so, get into Miami now because of fuck, fucking asshole Trump. Oh, oh, well, at least you can't get in with a laptop. No, you well, can't. I thought, I thought, wait, wait, now. I thought they, they relaxed that law, though. Well, you know, yeah, that's what they tell you just before they stick it in and say, oh, the prostate isn't that large. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, that, and, and, there. <laughs> and that's the guy at the gay club who told you that. But anyway, um, <laughs> you know, uh, I, it, it, I just, you know... Um, I just think that we're somehow very, very timid. We're very afraid of the world around us. And I don't think if you, if you look at the, you know, I should be more worried about whether I get on the subway and it gets from point A to point B without crashing or, or losing its yours. Place. Yeah, I mean, uh, they, they today, within a stop of you. today um, Mayor, uh, Governor Cuomo uh, pass some kind of law or something, they're going to look into the subways as being just a danger to the passengers and that they've got to well, do something about it. Think about it this way, though. You know, remember the days when you used to get on an airplane, you usually wore a tie or a nice clothes? Oh, everybody now got just everybody, big everybody. cesspool buses. Listen. Well, oh, no, it's a fight club. Now you're going to. There's you're so get... many fucking weirdos on airplanes nowadays. It's ridiculous. You're, you're either going to get what? beat up by a flight attendant, yeah. or you're going to have a fight with another passenger who's exactly. arm on your armrest, or you're be held kid. up by TSA people. Yeah, yeah. Oh, doing fucked by TSA agents. Well, yes, friend of mine do. today left New York. I was telling uh, what's his name, and TSA what's his name? It's Alex. It's Alex. Is what's Alex. his name? <laughs> Thank you, Alex. I'm sorry. Stopped him. TSA stopped him because he's a diabetic. He had his needles. Mm -hmm. He says, you can't bring those aboard because that's a weapon. Mind you, a friend of mine is a short little Italian guy. Doesn't take any bullshit off of nobody. And he gave him the note says, how do you know that's my doctor's note? If I miss this plane, you son of a bitch, I'm going to sue you. The airport, the state of New York, the city of New York. And everybody else is in his goddamn airport if I can miss my damn plane. Mike, the guys that yell that they're going to sue are the ones that never sue. Oh, and this one put, would. Yeah. That the left. Well, there's a point there. The more one talks, the less one acts. I, yeah, yeah. And 
Yeah. He's a short little Italian guy. You don't want to mess with him. But here's what I have to say about this whole, are we being too sensitive? Holy fuck balls. You mean the fact that we, uh, every new technological achievement we attain, you know, somebody's going to hijack it and morph it and manipulate it and, and use it against us to cause us physical harm? Holy, holy fuck. I can't Brian, believe we're that. we're safe. The Muslim ban is on. Yeah, uh, right. We yeah. are safe. I feel so safe now. You know, yeah, but, no, but the oh, point is, the point is, I'm talking about the reality of 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 uh, uh, of the situation. You know, That's my insane. chances of getting blown way. up in a subway by a terrorist are less than the MTA causing an accident. OK, in which I'd lose my life. I mean, I, my you have to look at the realities. And the reality is that, uh, you know, you, you, everybody's like, oh, I don't want the I don't want the Muslims in because the terrorists are going to be here. They're not coming to your fucking neighborhood to begin with. They're coming to my fucking neighborhood. All right. I should be bothered by it, but I'm not because I, well, I, I don't live in I don't live in fear like the rest of you, those pussies out in America. You know what I read today? Yeah. That uh, uh, what was it? That uh, global warming, all the stuff that, you know, that is the effect of global warming is going to affect the southeast and the midwest and i thought that's god getting even that's no, cleansing so that's so cleansing karma. yeah karma's a bitch ain't it yeah, <laughs> yeah. Dear, 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 dear. but hey, when my know, friend this... might, what get back to my story real quick yeah. i didn't finish it friend of mine, he turned around and he goes hey asshole Fuck New York and you too. Well, you just well, told that I, you just told me that story ten minutes no, I ago. Just told the rest of the well, I mean, the fuck them. I don't want you to repeat stuff and then the audience but, that heard you know, it heard uh, it. But you, know, uh, you do, Alex. <laughs> well, I I run out of sure. material. Okay, <laughs> and know. we don't. Yeah. But, by the know. way, by the way, but hold on a second. We're joined by telephone. Who is this, Tim? This is Tim. Yeah, it's Tim. Okay. Hi, Tim. How are you? Good evening, everybody. Yeah. Anyway, let me put your name on that so I can rem so that I always know it's you when that particular thing rings. Because you changed phones, I think, at some point, didn't you, Tim? No, I not, no changes, but I have Charter. Who knows what Charter did? Because it's a yeah. VoIP phone. Yeah, yeah, a VoIP phone. Anyway, um, all I'm saying is when, when we talk about the the fear that America has, I mean, we're like we're like scaredy cats. Uh, well, you know, uh, yeah, we are the biggest pussies in the world. We're frightened about we're you know we're frightened about taking in uh, refugees. Who doesn't want to help a refugee for crying out loud? There's nothing more admirable when we see movies about heroic deeds by people. It's because they save some refugees somewhere. You know? No, we just we just don't like grandparents anymore. <laughs> oh, they're not Jesus. included in the family. Yeah. Did you see the list? How they divided it up? It was ridiculous. Really? It, it, yeah. It, it, you talk about it being prejudiced. It yeah, doesn't we... allow fiancés or son-in-laws or something else. Oh, yeah. On the other side, they do allow brothers. and It, it was ridiculous. Like, it was also, if you, if you have a relative... They in a... allow son-in-laws, but not brother-in-laws. Yeah. If you, yeah, ha if, like if you yeah. have If you have a, uh, a, a relation in America uh, or you have a job in America... Uh, you can but come. No, in. it's not that simple. They divide up the relations too. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah no grandfathers, no son-in-laws. I, I think that they're doing the family. Uh, 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 they, oh shit! I just turned on something. I think they're doing the family a favor by uh, by uh, separating those uh, ingrates out. Probably. <laughs> what, what do you mean those ingrates out? Yeah, getting rid of the the brother-in-laws, the son-in-laws. Oh, I see. Yeah, they, oh, okay. They, grandparents you know hey come on just get rid of them you know it's more parking for us if, if, if you say so i don't know getting rid of grandparents sounds like euthanasia to me oh just the works. beginning. yeah it's the beginning yeah <laughs> well and my fear went away when the countdown clock on fox news got down to zero tonight my fear dissipated what do you well, mean that's greta, greta van susteren lost her job at msnbc yeah yeah oh she, she did and up. Who did? Find out she was Muslim. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he, uh, you, talk, you jump in and talk about all the stuff I was going to talk about. Oh, well, hey, uh, great the, minds think alike. No, 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 time, no. Then what, what, what great mind thinks like yours? Uh, 
it, it, it was uh, she's uh, she's been bedumped. Uh, you know, it isn't it isn't like she said I'm quitting. Yeah, they, after six months, they they're letting her go, and I I can't believe it's for anything else. And I hate to say this because this is so sexist of me, but that has well, got to be I mean, the it, ugliest visage to turn on at dinner time. <laughs> They thought they were getting one of the pretty ones from Fox. They they mixed the pictures up. Oh, they yeah. fucked that one up bad. <laughs> so this was one of the women that, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, who was the head of Fox? Uh, they they huh? fucked the dog Dales. and she barked too wait, loudly. Wait, who, who, was, who was who was the head of Fox? Ailes. Uh, Ailes. Uh, Ailes. Ailes, Roger Ailes. Uh, yeah, they, he, he did hit up on her one day, but he, he had pink eye. So that was his yeah. excuse. You know, I mean, well, uh, she is. Uh, you you know, know, she had a facelift a couple of years ago, and I saw her the other day on MSNBC, and I went, "That facelift just didn't work, did it?" Signed with Mika Brzezinski. Uh, Trump. Well, uh, now uh, don't go into that story because I'm going to bring that one up. <laughs> well, yeah, it was a segue. You, you fed it to me. No, I didn't yeah. feed it to you. Well, you fed me facelift. <laughs> well, well, uh, wait a minute, Mika is not an un, uh, uh, no, Mika, unattractive woman. I like Mika. Yeah. Uh, even though you know she comes from socialist background, uh, I like Mika, and uh, you know she's hot. Yeah. She Russian? I, I'm trying to be like her. I actually uh, had my second uh, Pilates reformer one-on-one uh, -on -one session this morning. Well, you probably wore the same bra size. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bigger bravo! Kid. Bravo! I'm bigger than she is. <laughs> the biggest Alex. Anyway. Where was I? Um, I don't know where Mika I was. Mika and facelifts. Oh yeah. So, uh, so I mean, uh, but I, I, you know, I, I've never really liked Greta Van Suster, and even when she was at CNN, and then she went to Fox, and I, I've just never been that uh, enamored of her as a on-air performer, shall we say? You know. What's her thing? Was she an attorney, or is she uh, uh, some sort no, of journalist? I don't know. What was she? She was a lawyer. Was she a lawyer? She was a lawyer. Yeah. She's left the center too, from what I understand. As far as her politics, yeah. personal politics. Well, Although she, of course, I mean, on Fox, she rarely showed that side for obvious reasons. But well, then she, I, she, she is identified as a little I feel bad for her because she, you know, she did leave uh, Fox because she did not like the culture there and what was happening. And uh, she, she felt... She tried to be a human, too, on MSNBC. She tried to be a real human. Yeah. It just didn't work quite. But, what? you know, Ari Melber, Ari Melber is replacing her. Who's Ari Melber? Yeah. I hate He's kind of like the, the brilliant mind that's on late at night and substitutes for Lawrence. He's and, on during the day, and, too. And, and yeah. no, no, there's, there's, He's, well, there's, He's pretty sharp. He's got a sharp you mind. Know, you know, it, speaking, speaking of, of, of picking up the bottom of the swamp, uh, <laughs> MSNBC has picked up Ali Velshi. You know this guy? No. Yeah, 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 I heard of him. He was he he was he they he was a big uh, he got economics really big guy. at CNN. Mm -hmm. uh, he was an economics guy, yeah. And he, they made him like gave him a big show, the morning show, I think, or something like that, oh, or yeah, CNN. That's what I was and Pete, then that Pete didn't. Pete Dominic work. interviewed him not too long ago. He's it, half Kenyan and. Well, fuck Pete uh, Dominic. But anyway, uh, Obama. Huh? Uh, I, I, hey, Alex, I think no, that's no, a good no. way to cover the big bubble. No, but here, here's the here's the he thing. Let you if you ask Ali me Velshi like, then people. then I think went over to like headline news or something. He wandered around from one place. To, I he, I think he was at uh, um, Al Jazeera for a while, you know. Dramatic. And all of a sudden, he winds up now on MSNBC in a pretty good slot during the day, uh, two hours during the day, one show and then another show after that, about an hour with an hour difference. And I'm just wondering. Why they keep going back to this same pool, this failed pool, to try and get people? You know, and I, I can see them. Too much. I can give you a postulation there, Alex. Uh, guess yeah. they're too far fucking deep in uh, corporate uh, in, in corporate pocketbooks. It could be. I think there may be some other reasoning too. Uh, you know that that they go well. They didn't know how to use him right. You know, we know how to use them right. Now, here's the thing with Greta Van Susteren. So she leaves Fox, and MSNBC gives her a job. And she leaves Fox for the most noble of reasons. You know, she didn't like the culture over there. She didn't like what Ailes had been doing. She didn't like the fact there were other people doing the same thing. And she wanted to get out of there. Not that they ever hit on her. I can't imagine that. But 
she she had morals Maybe about with it. the two by four. Did you see? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. And she went over. She went over to MSNBC because they wanted her like uh, flies on shit because they want anything Fox has. Okay, that's their latest operating theory. And uh, she goes over to MS MSNBC, and they only give her six months. I mean, come on, what is the, what's that about? You know, you, you, you wanted her like crazy, and then you only gave her six months when it, you know, it takes a year, year and a half or something to really build a decent audience and to build a show. Uh, and as Jimmy Dore says on YouTube, and you wonder why people migrate to YouTube and yeah. uh, alternative news sources yeah. like uh, Google and other online sources. You wonder why they, they, we do that. Yeah. Well, there's your reason maybe right there. Maybe she's going to work for... Maybe she's going to work for Dylan Radigan. Yeah. Here's here's the guy I've been waiting for. I've been wondering where he was, and here he is. Hello, R Rob Alfano. Hello. How, how are you? everyone? How are you? Good. Good. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm, I'm surviving. Yeah. Where have you been yeah. the last couple of nights? Uh, doing stuff? Oh, just a long week, and then when you get down to this time of night, no energy, you know? So I'm like, uh, oh, just... No energy to get on and uh, citizen panel it up. Just yeah, yeah. So I was on Tuesday. It, it, yeah. it, there are some days that um, that are, are worse than others, right, Rob? Oh, yeah. Yep. And this has just been a particularly bad week for you. Well, lie yep. back, enjoy the show, and jump in anytime you want to because we we like your bon bon, bon ami. It think. was a great great day today, wasn't it? <laughs> what do you mean it was a great day today? Just the news. Oh, the, yeah. Now, uh, now, let's get to the big story, okay? I think Trump hit the wall today because everybody is on his case, even his own Republicans, yep. for this. The, now, in case people are, are just tuning in, they, 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 like me, stay away from the news as much as they possibly can, let me tell you what happened. There's a woman over at uh, MSNBC by the name of Mika Brzezinski. She does the sh show with Joe Scarborough called Morning Joe. They happen to be engaged to each other, by the way. It's a very nice uh -huh. little, little love Thanks story. Sure. You huh? know who her father was? Yes, yes. Yeah, he, uh, he was, what, Carter's... Uh, um, he had some major uh, thing mm -hmm. in Carter's administration. Yeah. Was um, he... Uh, sec not Secretary the of big State. New, he's a big new Brzezinski. Yeah. Name. Um, anyway, Donald Trump. Now, look, this man is president of the United States, okay? He, he should have a certain amount of dignity, but I think that has eluded him on some level. And I don't know what that level is yet. But he wrote this morning in a tweet, I heard poorly rated Morning Joe speaks badly of me. Don't watch anymore. How, oh, so he heard. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's how come low IQ crazy Mika, along with Psycho Joe, came to Mar-a-Lago three nights in a row around New Year's Eve and insisted on joining me. She was bleeding badly from a facelift. I said what? no. What the fuck? Uh, I, yeah, oh, wait, I, my, wait, I don't want your I don't want your opinion uh, yet, Phil. Yep. Oh, because if you can excuse this one, you, you are a bigger it. moron than I give you credit for. I looked at a close-up of uh, uh, Mika yeah. and Joe, uh, and I, I and it, it looked like a good facelift to me. Yeah. Well, uh, anyway, uh, the, hey, the point hey, is, Alex, I see your I, real quick. I see your uh, what you just said about Phil. If you can if you can spend this, you'll be a bigger moron than what you give him credit for. I'll raise you. If he can spin this and do it convincingly, he ought to work in uh, Trump's cabinet. Yeah, or at least in his press corps. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Because, you, I, you, you know, Kellyanne Conway, who who um, uh, could excuse a fart that Donald Trump would make, she was, stopped, she was stopped by TMZ and asked about this thing. And all Kellyanne Conway could say, lovely day today, isn't it? Yeah. She, and hey, and uh, oh hey, how about that Kate's law getting passed? She just wouldn't even take it on because the only yeah. thing she could say was that was really bad shit on Trump's part. Now let me hear what you think about it, Phil. Well, you know the the company line. No joking. It, no joking. No, no, straight no joking. ahead. Com 
the company line is if you hit at Trump, he hits back 10 times as hard. Yes. And the only trouble is somebody true. said, yes, he hits back 10 times as hard, but below the belt. Well, you know, I mean, he's a street fighter. No. Uh, oh, yeah, he's yeah, a street fighter. This little pansy who went to military school is a street fighter? Who are you trying to kid? Well, you know he what? He from the old man. He learned the street fighter from the old man. I believe I believe he is a street fighter, but he is the president of, of the United, United States. States. Now, Alex, I got a question for Phil. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Phil? Yes. If he was one of your employees and you were paying him and he did this kind of stuff on the job, on the phone, on Twitter, on Instagram of insulting people half the time, how long would it take for you to fire him? Wouldn't take thirty seconds, but he's not my employee. He works for us. He works for us. That's, that's he's your, Phil, he's your, he's your employee. He he's your employee. Well, yeah, he works. For yes, and I, I not only employed him, I paid money to have him there, uh, and uh, I don't know what his strategy is. Uh, I don't particularly like this, but. I am also looking at it and saying, you know, he doesn't fit in with the uh, no, with the, the Washington the, the, elite. No, but, and this is, has nothing to do with that, Phil. This has no, no, nothing yeah, to do with that. It has nothing to do with it. Everything to do with it. It's Neither all did about, Jackson fit in. It's not about substance. It's about the delivery of the message, and it, so it has everything to do with What's it. What's the message but, then? Well, the message is that the, there is no man. He's a moron. the Washington elite <laughs> want these parties. They no, want wait, 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 uh, wait, wait, Phil, 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 stop it. Stop it. You're in the wrong, you're going down the wrong road here and putting us into no, that I'm ditch down again. The road that's correct. The fact no, the fact of the matter is, you know, you can say, Oh, the guy's an outsider and so he is gonna act like everybody else. Well that's fine. Right. But you know, there are certain decent human conventions that we adhere to with each other. It's called being civilized. Okay? Well, then if you and he it, today yeah. with Mika Brzezinski breached yeah. that in spades so much that you can't even get major Republicans and name a major Republican who didn't come out today and say, this is going a little too far. Uh, uh, Paul Manafort. No, uh, not, but, uh, no, not Paul Manafort. I'm talking, I'm talking about, uh, 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 what were the names I oh, saw? Ryan, Speaker of the house. Uh, yeah. Ryan. Ryan. Uh, yeah. I, I think even, uh, what's his name with the glasses? They and all the wanted to distance themselves from the city. They said that's going a little too far and it was uh, going it, a little too far. It is going too but, far. But that's it, the establishment white. That's the establishment Washington. And we want, we want to get all them out. Right. We want, we want everybody like Trump in Washington. Yeah. Now. That's what we want. We want crude, crass, nasty people. Who don't well, know anything about how to treat now, people or thin is that what we ask, want in Washington? Can I ask a question? Because I don't know the answer to this question, and I seriously would like to know. What did Mika Brzezinski and Joe Scarborough say that got him to uh, to do this tweet? So what they say is that he's mentally disturbed. I think that's you know a but, pretty but, reasonable. But, but wait, but wait, no, no, but it, it, that kind of comment. Listen. This man is president of the United States. You're supposed to let that shit roll you know, off your back. It, it's that he you're can't stand with, anybody with who Korea. doesn't. Uh, he, you're he, dealing with the biggest problems in the world. You got I, North Korea. You got all these things. And you're going to let a, 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 the way it was put on CNN tonight, you're going to get like a let a basic cable and, you know, uh, personality can, get can to I, you like that. Right. Well, let me say this. Uh, you know, I, under, I I think I just read something that uh, Congress went home uh, for the uh, for right. the break. That yes. means that they're not going to continue and pass the health care bill. They will have a health care bill tomorrow, however. A new uh, one. I thought they had already left. They have a new one tomorrow. That they're yeah, but who's going to vote on it? I I, they're they not going to vote on it There's until no after. no voting. Yeah. Uh, no, after, after the 4th of July. But, well, I, yeah. I think that... Uh, if they would have voted before the 4th of July, maybe he could have pushed it through because they wanted to get out of there. But, uh, you know, and there was a possibility he could have twisted a few arms. Now that people are going to go back to their constituents and the constituents are going to give them hell, uh, I don't see them voting uh, for the bill. Yeah. Uh, uh, Let me uh, ask you a question. Oh, yeah. Okay. If the if Trump wants his health bill passed, am I correct? I would imagine he does. Okay. Why is it most of the Republicans are saying, hey, 
uh-uh, that doesn't make sense. His well, own party, his own party saying, it does not make sense, Donald. What the hell's wrong with you? Do you think that he tried to sabotage this health care bill by doing I these tweets? So. I mean, that's a little Machiavellian, but... Yeah, you I know, know, well, I, 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 I'll tell you something he so. didn't do. I'll tell you something he didn't do. Usually when there's a bill like this that his party wants to pass, uh, he gets out there. Uh, uh, Obama did it with Obamacare. They get out there and they almost campaign for it. They go and they hold town halls and they give speeches at places talking about, you know, this medical plan that's got to be pushed and you t support your local congressman and so on. Trump didn't say word one about this stuff. He changed That's the story. It mean. And the story, you know, this may be <laughs> the kind of smoke and mirrors that he does to change the story and get what he wants. And I don't think he wanted this stuff. He's not going to get it. Well, he, no, no, he, certainly, think, he certainly didn't campaign all, for it. And, and that's one of the things that killed it. He could have put it over the top. He, he is president if he had right. gone out and campaigned for it. But he doesn't know how to do that, you know. He's but not that angle. sophisticated as a politician. Angle. Wait, well, well we, there's only we, five senators that came out for the bill. Five. Uh, five came out against nine, it. No, uh, nine against, five for. All the others have not said how they're going to vote. I they couldn't get more than five to come out and say yes. Uh, they said that there was some, uh, there was like five. They need, they can only lose two. And I think they've lost. No, so they had nine that were going to probably vote against it. The, everybody else were undecided. There was five that actually said they were definitely vote for it the way it was. Nobody else came out. Five out of 100. Right. So now they're going to run home. They're going to listen to the constituents. They're going to come back, and they're not going to vote for it. Okay, but we're, we're getting... They, wait a minute. Why what are the constituents going to say? What well, are the constituents going to say? It's I, no good. I, no. I, so aren't they there to represent think, the people? They're going to have town halls, and in these town halls, they're going to be yelling and screaming. Uh, uh, whether they're uh, liberal, Democrats, or Republicans, they're all going to be up in arms, and nothing's going to get done. Uh, I'm just wondering if that's what Trump really wanted. Uh, you know, it could well be. Bill is a job killer, Phil. Let me let this me say. Bill is a job killer. Okay, let me say this. I think that this failure on their part may be the biggest thing for single payer health care that's ever happened, because people now are going to maybe want something. They're going to say, well, we almost lost what we had, which wasn't great, but we're not getting anything to replace it. And the fact is, if we get a Democratic Congress next time, if we can manage to muster that, and they throw in a single-payer plan, that could happen. Because people saw the possibility of what the worst would be that could happen to them. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, nothing is going to happen unless it's bipartisan. Because all you're, you're right. going to no, have absolutely. is tat, you're going to have each individual party, when they get in power, try to undo because they weren't involved. They so someone needs to reach your I, I wrote my congressman, and I, 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 it's a woman, and I said to her, you know what? Somebody needs to take the step and reach across the aisle and come up with a plan together because all you got, all you guys are doing is fighting back and forth. You you re, you resent the fact that the Democrats did this and they were wrong to do it the way they did on their own. And now you guys are wrong, and that's all you got going back and forth. And there are a lot of there are a lot of Congress folks who do want to work together on a on a on a on a health care bill. They want to go across the aisle and work the, the together. The Democrats they they actually have a proposal they're working on. They would go down towards single payer. Single payer ought at least be an option. We don't have to force it down people's throats, but it has to be an option. Well, I mean, should, you know, what we should do is we should discuss we should discuss the possibilities, you know, <clears throat> and, and all possibilities, not I just. Think it should be something you could buy if you want single payer. It should there should be a uh, a way of doing it where you can get it. Uh, Wait a minute, so like let me get this straight. Uh, let me get this straight, okay? Yeah. Single payer would mean you don't pay or you don't buy insurance. No, no, no. No, you could have it both ways, taxes. Alex. Well, you could have it both ways, but given given that you don't have to pay anything on Somebody one plan and you pay. have to pay money on the other plan, which one are you going to take? Are you in Disneyland? Are you on the E-Ride? 
everybody pays. Well, you no, know, they no, they don't. They don't. They don't in England. They don't in France. They don't in the, they in, do. in the Nordic countries. No, they don't. They, they, got they high pay taxes. taxes. Because of sure, taxes. they've got high taxes, and I'd be willing okay. to pay higher taxes if I knew that my health was taken care right. of. Well, exactly. your health exactly. gets taken care of by Medicare because you pay a monthly fee. Uh, on top of the fact that you paid a Medicare tax. Hey, it isn't that good. It isn't that perfect. And I'll tell you why. Because it's right. only, it's only uh, 80%. Uh, 80%. Okay. Well, it, uh, well, wait a minute. Hold on a second. My, my, my ex-wife just got out of the hospital with this big pancreatic cancer operation, which I would imagine. If, if Who's making all that noise? I bet it's, I bet it's Brian. Brian? Oh, uh, uh, hold on. Let me meet my microphone. Okay. I'm, uh, yeah. Opening up a pack of something to eat. Oh. <laughs> He's the perpetual. You know, eater. you can buy Medicare. No, wait a minute. Let me finish. Let me finish what I'm saying. I'm finished. Uh, you know, and I think maybe cost her, you know, three hundred thousand dollars. I mean, it was a major operation. Fourteen hours on the table. You know, uh, how many of us, given the twenty percent that Medicare doesn't take care of, could pay that twenty percent, which would be about sixty thousand dollars? You can negotiate okay. it down. It's but not, it's not a matter of negotiating to. down. I'm saying that uh, I think Medicare, for instance, should take care of 100%. Okay. I, don't, you're, you're, I don't see why not. Your ex is over 60. And by the way, I pay for Medicare every month, too. Right, Medicare isn't said. free. That's what I said. Now, if you want that, you just have it taken out of your, out of your paycheck and, and you pay for it. And if you want private, you pay for that. But you shouldn't be forced to have one or the other. Uh, just like uh, Obamacare. All I know is every, uh, all these other countries, they don't. this doesn't, didn't seem to be a big problem for them to put in place. And somehow we, we can't do it because of our selfish nature. No, it's because you can't mandate that somebody has to do something in this country because we have freedom. Here's what you have. We have freedom. We don't have freedom in this country, Phil. And if you believe that, you're believing the myth. Well, I have the freedom to decide no, whether no, I want well, to Well, uh, believe approach. me, there are a lot of free. If I'm going to take a gun and go out and fight for my freedoms, I'm sorry, the freedom to pick mm -hmm. my insurance company is not going to be one of them, okay? Well, Social I, Security I, is mandatory, Phil. Uh, Social and it's the best it, program we ever had. Social yes, Security is and mandatory. It was, and it was instituted by a socialist. Uh, it, it, well, and what's wrong with that? I guess, I, guess, I guess socialists have some good ideas, huh? Well, no, because Social Security, if you would have been, is, uh, taken that money all of these years and put it into private... Uh, 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 Incorrect, uh, Phil, because it only works if it's mandatory, and you, nobody would pay disability insurance, which they get, and survivor's insurance. People would not buy that on their own. You get survivor's disability, not just retirement. You well, would have your, It's an insurance, not an annuity. But, Tim, you You're have the right not to buy things in this country. You shouldn't be mandated to have to buy something. You do it because you, you want to. It's no, the but it kept, it kept it's our ESOP's, country out of depression. It's ESOP's it fable. It saved thousands it's, of people from being in the poorhouse. The no, Tim, it's the guy that saved the acorns, and then everybody else wants his acorns in the, in the wintertime. It's Aesop's fable. Uh, they, this has been going I'm on sorry, for years. I'm sorry, this is an Aesop fable. This is something that's a matter of life and death. Well, we, we you know, and you tend to simplify it to an Aesop fable. Yeah. Well, you, well it's very simple. Uh, it, it's a matter of life and death, but if, if people planned for the future and weren't so selfish uh, in, the, in, the, in their earning years, they'd have the money to retire. They'd have the money for health care. And uh, your friends... That's assuming, that's assuming that everybody got a great break in life and everybody made a nice living in life and everybody lives happily ever that after. Takes, that's not it, a lot of people. Have to save a small percentage uh, 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 but of it's course, saving I, money when you don't have enough hey, money to put I, food on. I made, I made a lot. I made if, a lot of money. Save money for two years, Phil, and you die. Your family gets nothing under Social Security. Social Security is an insurance that pays until your kids get out of school. Hey, if if you get term life insurance uh, for two years and you die, if you can you afford have have, it, well, the term, cost of term life insurance, term disability, and retirement would be cost a lot more than you pay into Social Security. Well, I've yeah. seen the figures. Well, it's either you pay the taxes or you invest it yourself uh, and you're self-directed. And uh, yeah. but I don't want to be forced to do it. Well, look at I, me. I, I'm, I, I don't have a hell, I don't I, I don't have a hell of a lot of money support. because yeah. I had a hell of, a, hell of a good time, I guess. You know. Yeah, but I, I, But uh, Huh? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I made a lot of money in my time, and I didn't. I, I somehow between. Uh, it's amazing. Okay. How, uh, the more money you make, uh, how little you get back. Because when you're making a lot of money, all of a sudden you have lawyers, you have accountants, you have business managers, you have this, you have that. Before I was through, you know, everybody was getting a little well, piece never, of me. You're, you it, never there's even. A there's a law. You never you're, even wait, realized wait, wait. your salary because you didn't even have a mortgage. Yeah. So I know I realize the difference since I've had a mortgage now, the yeah. difference in what I realize of my salary. Sure, is I had tremendous. Nine dependents. Yeah. I could take nine dependents when I had a mortgage. Now, not not so much. Uh, yeah. You know, I you know I was paying almost sixty grand a year in mortgage. Yeah. And uh, but you know I can't afford that anymore. I want to cut my expenses and I want to get into not having to pay a lot of money. And because I didn't save any money, I'm like Alex. I spent on everything. There isn't a toy that I don't own, uh, and and I have two of them. <laughs> you know, but uh, I'm gonna have to. I didn't figure I'd live this long. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, what I was saying to I was saying to Stephen Pearl was, wouldn't it be nice if we all knew when we were going to die, then we could spend all the money appropriately. You know, hey, that's why I didn't make the appointment for the DMV uh, because you know I, I'm not making it to 63. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, um, if I can but, make uh, it to 77, any idiot can. But uh, <laughs> by the way, my wife got out of the hospital. My ex-wife got out of the hospital. Did uh, she have Part B? Huh. I'm uh, sure. She, I'm sure. She told me 65, so the 20 percent. Oh handled. yeah, yeah, yeah. But the 20 percent, yeah. she probably had uh, a supplemental plan of one sort or another. But well, she, she's probably still going to walk out paying several thousand dollars. Medicare pays more than 80 percent on the hospital bill, though. It pays in the 90 percent. Oh, range, really? Do they? Depending on what hospital. Oh, okay. Yeah, because if, if you you pay for the first so many days of. You get up to 60 days a year or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and, that, and remember, hospital insurance is free if you work 10 years. The, you're paying only for the Part B, and your premium represents half of what it costs to cover you. The government's paying mm -hmm. half of your Part B premium. And people can actually buy it. If you, you, if you don't work under Social Security and you, and you turn 65, you can buy Part A for five or $600 a month. So it's single payer, and you can literally buy it. Yeah, if Tim, you don't have I enough gonna, work credit, so I was going to mention. So. When, that's why I was going to mention when Alex started giving me a hard time about the possibility of buying single payer and buying uh, the. Yeah, uh, you can do, you, I think it should be allowed to well, buy both depending Tim, on your income. Tim, yeah. Tim, uh, cops are uh, in California are not on Social Security. They're on something called PERS. Right. I worked in Ohio, and most of my friends were not under Social Security. If right. you have a spouse that worked, or if, if not, uh, now you have insurance if you're unless you're. We had some towns in Detroit area that went right. bankrupt. They lost their insurance. They right. lost their pension and everything. They had to go. Bear, they had to hope their spouse had coverage, or they didn't get Medicare. Right. Well, PERS, PERS is what they use for cops, and Social Security is right. what they use for everybody else. But uh, so you know, you can elect uh, in some cases to go you know one way or another. But you can you can do it privately, just like uh, just like cops and firemen do it. Uh, yeah, part B, now, Part B coverage, you don't have to work under Social Security. Anybody can buy that at 65. It's yeah. Part A that you have to work for 10 years. Oh, now, here's my uh, suggestion for moving towards single payer. All these regions that the Republicans say, well, we don't have any insurance companies under Obamacare in this area. Let them have Medicare. Let them have Medicare. Give them the Medicare single payer. That, these insurance companies are just pulling out so they can get the law written the way they want. They spent more money on lobbying. In twenty uh, the, so far this year and last year than any other industry. Well, well also, really also remember, awesome. remember, remember why these companies uh, pulled out of some of these states. It, it had to do with the fact that uh, the very thing that they were it, it set up to do was Ob Obamacare, and they were worried that it was no longer going to happen. Well, he, and he so the, and, and he no, he no, 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 no. But forget about the fact. Don't blame Obama. You know, it is now in Trump's camp. The reason why people are getting frightened, why the insurance companies are getting frightened, is because of what the Republicans are planning to do. Okay. And the reason the premiums went up, Phil, was because Marco Rubio added an amendment that took away the risk corridors and the, and the supports for the premiums for uh, the people that had not been insured for a while. The premiums. That's why the premiums went well, up. Let, will you let Tim finish before you start, Phil? Please. Oh, well, I was. Please. Well, you, the uh, thing I'll is, post you can't. On Facebook, the link 
to the Los Angeles Times you, article. You can't. You about can't hold it. Why the premiums went up? You can't right. hold a a a conversation because of the way Skype exists that he can't hear you and you can't hear him when he's talking. So you know, I mean, right. it, it uh, you know one at a time. Du okay. Single single duplex. Thing. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, Phil, I got a question for you. Does that also the PERS cover the state of California, all the employees in the federal? I'm, I think so. I'm not sure. I, I know I, I it's thought, not the top firemen. Because yeah, both of us are in California. I'm in Sacramento. I don't know where you're at. I'm uh, in Walnut Creek. Oh, we're just <laughs> throw rocks at each other. D didn't you have some cities in California that went bankrupt, their, their pension systems for the local cities? I'm not sure. Uh, uh, I forget what city it was. You uh, wonder with, with those smaller <laughs> systems, you run the risk of, of of retiring and getting nothing. Same thing with the GM workers that lost the you know the white collar workers lost their pensions. But Tim, it's not insurance. small. It's not a small system. Pers is a is a big. No, uh, neither was GM, but they, everybody lost. I know it's not a small system, but they made some bad investments. And they had some rock yes. investments. Okay, let me yeah, read you. Let me, yeah, let me, yeah, hold hold on a second. I'm, I'm getting some comments on, on uh, our page here. Uh, Abby Murray writes, Phil, you're in La La Land. Yeah. <laughs> the only one in La La Land is Abby Murray. Yeah. Tell it to pull up. You see, you th that's thing. what Trump does. That same childish thing. And when somebody yeah. disagrees with you, you hammer back with some kind of insult. Hey. Tell her to call up. Tell yeah. her to tell it to my face. Uh, it says six hundred billion for in defense, and we don't have the money to give everyone free health care. Fuck that. Huh. I want the defense, uh, and we no. want the health care. You want to spend that much money? Why? Why just just cut the defense in half? We don't need all this defense crap. Well, I mean, I, 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 do I? Do, do anybody agree? Oh no! no I, I, absolutely. I, Phil has fallen for the fallen for the big lie about the uh, industrial complex, the military industrial complex. Well, it's it's, it's they've the, got they've got you they've got you brainwashed. It's the cat. Well, we need to spend if, ten if, times if, more. You would ha you would rather have services uh, driving people around and paying them from government money yep. to do it yep. than to yep. Yep. jobs yep. making shit yep. that can Taking sell care yep. of our people. Arabia. Yep. Yeah. Taking care of our people? Yeah. Absolutely. I think when the we, first primary... Well, hold on a second, everybody. The first primary duty that we have in this country as a society be, is to take care of each other. And the reason we take care of each other is, if we don't, why the fuck do we have a government anyway? Because you it know? weakens people to have them dependent oh. on government. No, 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 no. Hold on a second, Phil. It's bullshit. You know, some people... Uh, it doesn't weaken them. It gives them something for their money. I mean, you're spending all this money on taxes every year, and you're not getting your money's worth. And the reason you're not getting your money's worth is because of this $600 billion that's going to defense every year and taking 51 cents out of every dollar you pay in taxes. Okay. So for the last eight years, Obama has been funding this, and it's still 51 cents on a dollar. And now, all of a sudden, three months, five months into an administration, it's Trump is, is the bad guy. No, He's Trump, the Trump wants to raise it what? Trump wants to Trump. raise it okay I, well I want to see it raised well, why? It why? why 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 because the why? cat is outside the mouse hole because the mouse inside told you there's no. a cat out there well, hey look he told uh, he told uh, Tillerson to cut his budget by 30% he is right. he is cutting he is cutting but he is cutting the the fat yeah. out of government so why not give that money to what? us wait, wait, wait. Why, why not give it why not give that money to us and in the form of better health care and, and, and having a lot of our needs taken care of. We got a subway system here in New York that is just falling apart. Okay? There's nothing here in D.C. It's happening. We have, we have infrastructure that's falling apart. We and have that's bridges. What, oh, right. Oh, and oh, and oh. the first thing that Trump said when he was running, uh, when he was campaigning, was that he was going to put money into infrastructure. Yeah, and you know yeah, something? But he, he cut it. Yeah, but he cut it. He cut it. 21 percent. He cut that damn infrastructure. Getting so long. 21 percent. What, 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 yeah. what did you say, Brian? Brian hasn't said anything. Say something, Brian. I was just saying. I was just doing the, my cricket noise. I got you know, hey, we're waiting so long for that. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's not coming, and you know, you hear the crickets chirping, and you hear the owls hooting, and 
you know, the tumbleweeds are blowing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he cut, the, he, cut, he cut the money, 21.7% of the infrastructure out. Mike, that you, fail, you fail to see the Well, point. wait a minute. Will you let him finish Why? talking, Phil? Why? Why? Okay. Well, see, okay, okay is, our infrastructure is, is right the, now is screwed. I, okay. Our highways are screwed. Everything's screwed in this state, in this country. Why so, the hell that son of a bitch is going to get away with that type of crap? If you ever read Stephen <laughs> Covey's president, Seven Highly... Uh, oh, the seven, he's a dictator. What you have to do is you have to sharpen the saw once in a while. What Trump is doing is he's going to lower taxes, which is going to get business primed. When you get business, there's more dollars going, the more people employed, and there's more dollars going into taxes because uh, they're paying a lot. How do you figure that? Because that's that's economic. All it does. Why does he get the money for the infrastructure all the way out? Okay, he why does he okay, why does he raise the tax up for these SOB friends of his or millionaires and they, they get away with jack yeah. shit? Yeah, look, he, he, here, 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 here's something that, that, that we have failed to bring up in any of this discussion about the health care. That the health care, among other things, get, had built into it a tax break for business. But it wasn't a tax break for business now because a lot of businesses have had to put out money for Obamacare and so on. Uh, it's not a relief from that plus extra uh, benefits for business, but the money is retroactive. It has to go back and pay since the beginning of Obamacare, pay these billionaires back for the money they spent. Give where me a break. Read? Come on. Where, where did you, you see that? What do you mean? I, where did I see it? It's been there. It's been in the news every day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not Wait a minute. Tell, tell him, Tim. Tell him, Tim. It's retro. Hold, hold on a second, Tim. Tim, tell him it's retroactive, yeah. right? It's right. And I got one more thing to say about the Medicaid cuts of eight hundred billion. Not one person on a uh, poor person gets a penny from Medicaid. It goes to doctors. It goes to social workers. It goes to hospitals. It goes to clinics. Do you know that uh, the insurance companies? make tons of profits because they actually administer Medicaid in most of the states. Here in Michigan, we have three or four companies, that insurance companies, that run Medicaid. And there's plenty of providers. So they're lying when they say you can't find a doctor. And two, these companies that have insurance, and even the head of uh, uh, Molina, I think Mario Molina, that runs one of the insurance companies, says he's totally against the bill. Because, you know, they're making tons of profits. So what they need to do is, uh, if you want to administer Medicaid in the state and or Medicare, because there's insurance companies that administer Medicare by state. Right now we have Wisconsin physicians doing it out of Wisconsin because our Blue Cross went to, yeah. went to hell. But yeah. anyway, uh, what, if you want a Medicaid contract, you should have to also offer an Obamacare plan in that same state. Balance the fact that you make a tremendous profits on Medicaid. And you don't make so much on Obamacare. Well, you know, you, you, you know something. Money you, you, on Obamacare. You, 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 Tim, not Tim, the big Tim, Tim, you, Tim wait, 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 hold on a second. Okay. Tim, you, you said something I think very important, and I hope it isn't lost on everybody's listening. And that is that when these funky. bills get paid, when people get Medicaid, when people get Medicare, the money goes to pay doctors. People who work right. in the medical profession, uh, it goes it, it goes to paying uh-huh. them. So the, the benefit is it, not necessarily it, to the it, huh. It keeps people it, working. It keeps hospitals open in small rural rural communities. And I'm telling and you now, are starting I, to talk I, about I'm this. telling you now that that doctors are having a really hard time of it if they if they're not part of like uh, an HMO now or whatever and are just hired, you know, as a hired hand because. Uh, they, they, it's just not the money out there. And when you take money out of the out of out of medical care, okay, and and single payer would certainly take care of it. You're you gutting a whole. You're gutting a whole profession. You see, this whole right. thing is based on what Tim said that the cutting <laughs> Medicaid. Now the problem is, is that I believe the budget for Medicaid was one and a half. Trillion was it, Tim? Is it one and a half trillion that that uh, was uh, right. they're talking about giving to the states, and that is a larger Who's budget replace those than jobs, they're paying Bill? now. But look, they're, they're, they're not going to replace see. those jobs no more than they are the coal miners. No, and these the, are jobs the, that foreign countries can't steal. 
because you know in local communities they're good it paying jobs. They support has, the community. Tim, it has nothing to do with what I just said. I said they're going to the you the, the federal government. Their budget is around a one and a half trillion dollars. Okay, okay, okay. all right. If I put and if I put a if I put a meter gonna, on that, if I put a, a, give that money to the states. If I put a meter on the amount of time you talk on this show, Phil. It would right. be more than 50% of the citizen panel. Well, uh, that's because there's only one of me. Well, it is <laughs> one of you, but you know, uh, if you were uh, now, I was going to go to I was going to go to Kevin and see what he thought. I, uh, uh, yeah, here, uh, Kevin, what, uh, you got any thoughts on this, or do you, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear yeah. me, Kevin? Yeah, I just want to know. Do you have any thoughts about this? Because uh, you've been very quiet. No, not really. It's a, it's a mess. And it needs to be uh, it needs to be redone once all these guys come back to where they're supposed to be. Yeah, and exactly. Exactly what we're talking about is that they need to reach across the aisle and get their shit together and quit pissing on each other. Well, That's the thing great. is, they have, in this whole thing about this this bill, they not once went to anybody on the other side, a Democrat, and said, Correct. "Let's talk." You know, right. we that want to bring we want to bring you. There was a little bit of that. They they thought they could do it with their own bully pulpit of having a majority in Congress, and they found out they were wrong because some of their Republicans know like, they have to go home the and they night, have to go deal. They have to go deal with their own constituency once they go back home, and they don't want to be the guy who all of a sudden they're saying, "I don't have medical care. Why don't I have medical care?" It's that son of a bitch. It's like what out. they. They said, the, uh, like I said the other night, they use, he used the corporate approach that he's going to hold it behind the closed doors till the last minute and then try and ram it down their throats and hope that he can get it through. Well, it didn't work. No. That won't. You, you know what, you know what happened to McConnell? That's corporate. You know what happened to McConnell? What? He, he was a no man for eight years and he forgot how to legislate. Yeah. All he did was, you could be, it's easy to be against something. He was against stuff for eight years. Right. And in eight so years' time, how, they kept saying, we're going to repeal it, we're going to repeal it, and nobody thought, maybe we should put our own bill together, and that's why they're in the, 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 yeah, the predicament there. Years, they could have been they doing... all that time to come up with a bill. Yep. Why didn't they? And they could have no, come up with a bill. Well, I, just, I, just, I just, here's what I don't understand. Where, where is the heavy lifting here? I mean, so many other countries, you know, we're one of the few countries in the world that doesn't have a single-payer system that is, a, uh, is an industrialized nation. Uh, oddly enough, the other one that doesn't have it is China. You would think the communists would have it, but they don't. Um, but they're working on it. They got enough people; they don't have to keep them alive. No, but they they're, no, people, no, but they're they also, they're, all, they're, uh, uh, to their credit, they they are also working on it. Uh, but why yeah, is it all these it. other nations? can do it easy peasy they it, it, it doesn't take any great amount of brain work for them to get it done and yet you know we've got this major problem here you know yeah, what it's is called, it it's called corruption it's called the profit motive alex it's yeah profit. it's profit well it's, it's you know corruption. to begin with it was that fucking reagan who who t yep. took the insurance companies from being non-profit organizations and let them be for profit well, you know, Phil, I know you say that's, boy, that's good because business can do it better than anybody else. That's why our prices are so goddamn high now. No, our prices are high because they're all in cahoots. They're all a bunch of thieves. No, but the, because they're allowed to be thieves because Reagan gave them the keys. Uh, okay. Lobbyists, and it's all these other bullshit people. No, and, Phil, and, Phil, and, Phil, and, the insurance companies would have never been gone the way they have gone if it hadn't been that they were suddenly allowed to be for profit. Hey, hey, you know, if the queen had balls, she'd No, be but king. wait a minute. I'm telling you, that was that was the well, thing that ruined Doesn't that make healthcare. sense, though, Phil? 20 Think years ago. It, 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 well, that's how long it took to escalate to this point. Wouldn't you well, like to see it? Wait a minute. Wouldn't you like to see it? Medical coverage has slowly gone up, and then it's like Moore's Law. It, it gets faster and faster and bigger and bigger. But it's been going up steady since that time in the 80s. Everything has. You know, se several well, Blue Cross organizations so are for profit now. Well, and that's the other not, thing, too. Everybody's yeah. litigious, right? So you've right. got to have crazy insurance. Yeah. Hospitals have to have it. Doctors have to have it. It's to the yeah. point now where 
My, I don't, you know, you can't go to a doctor who hangs a shingle out in front of his house anymore because he can't afford to live that way. You well, got to go to some office building where you got 12 doctors okay. and they work for them. They, they're, they're no longer entrepreneurs. Let, let, me, let, me, then, let, let me tell you, let me tell you right. something. Let me tell you something here. Yeah. Uh, I go and get physical therapy. Well, it was every, every week. Now it's every two weeks. And I'm told the next time I do it, they're going to, he's going to let me go because he thinks my knee is well enough that he doesn't have to do it Just anymore. Just down the stairs, they'll put you back. Uh, in. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I said to him, so how's business been? And he says, business has been terrible. It's the worst summer, spring we've ever had. And I said, why? He said, well, to begin with, uh, we, we're, 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 we're out of network here. All the doctors are out of network. He said, so people now, because of the way the economy is and the way the cost of health is going and so on, that they, they go to a place that's in network. He says, so we're out of network. He says, we're taking Medicare, but this company's probably going to get rid of taking Medicare next year. He said, there's going to be no more work for me here because, you know, yeah. I mean, it's old people that get bad knees and things like that. He said, it's just getting terrible. The economy, he said, the economy might look like it's good, but it's really not good because everybody's <clears throat> playing it close to the vest and afraid to spend their money. Yeah, and people can't borrow. But your friend, the uh, the drug kingpin uh, that raised the uh, whatever drugs he bought uh, a company five thousand percent. He's uh, my friend. Uh, my friend. Why do you call him my friend? Well, the venture he, capitalist. Yeah, the venture capitalist. He's uh, he's in uh, uh, he's in court now. Uh, there uh, well, he didn't you know, raise it five hundred times, but he raised it five thousand percent. No, they said. five. Uh, I don't know if it was five thousand percent. All I know is that this drug I keep talking about, the Zyfaxin, that helped me with uh, my irritable bowel syndrome, and it turned out that really probiotics worked better. But which is what their, I told their, you. their price went from three hundred dollars to twenty one hundred dollars. Okay, yeah. so. It was pretty much in the league with that guy, right. but the only so, thing was that he did it with an AIDS drug. You're talking about yeah. Martin Scarelli. And, yeah, uh, they yeah. Said, they You're said that he did it. Him. Yeah, Scarelli. That's it. They said so, that he did it uh, because he had losses in his venture capital fund, and what he was doing was he was using the drug to uh, to fund his losses. Uh, so, and so you wonder why people resent wealthy people. Yeah, but, you know, Phil, I don't know. Where, are you saying that he, exactly. he should have been able to exactly. charge whatever he wanted to charge? No, I, I'm saying what he did was a crime. And, uh, and, and it's, the, it's the fault of, uh, of our lobbyists and it's the fault of the insurance companies for paying it. You know, uh, they, uh, you know. Hey, the insurance companies aren't far behind him at being crooks. I mean, today I got a, yesterday I got a thing. For my insurance company, and it was, you know, I don't use my health care that much because, quite frankly, I, I don't get that sick. But I needed physical therapy for my knee, so I, they, you know, I went there and I paid twenty five dollars every time I went there as a as a copay to take care of my other twenty percent or whatever. And uh, I get this this massive envelope with just uh, two pages of the various charges. And I can't make heads nor tails out of it. Oh, you spent this well, much out of better. pocket, this much you've spent uh, from your deductible. What's the difference between deductible and out of pocket? That's your EOB, it's your explanation of benefits. Yeah, but, but, yeah, but I don't under... It, have a fucking degree it didn't explain any of my benefits. Yeah. All I saw was it doesn't look like they're ever going to pay me a penny for anything that goes wrong well, with me. The, the, well, you look at the initial charge and it's like fifteen thousand dollars, and then they write off this much, and then the insurance company covers this much by contract, and you get—it's bullshit. Yeah, it, you can't read them. Yeah, but I mean, uh, and you, not only that, then they break things down in a different way. You get different bills, and it gives you. It doesn't give you the data service. It gives you the date when it was billed. And yeah. then they, they group together some of the bills. So when you're trying to compare numbers, yeah. you can't compare numbers because they don't match up. Oh, we, we put these two together and that equals this. And yeah, the dates yeah. are all messed up. And you're like, what the fuck? I got, I got to spend hours. 
it sounds like you know what i did i took them i took i I took the seven or so pages that this uh, consumed and i just ripped them in a half and threw them in the garbage because i I couldn't couldn't understand look in the one column that says uh, How much? Patient responsibility. Patient responsibility. Mine was one hundred and seven dollars, yeah. but I kept paying money every week, so I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I never got yeah. that. Alex, that seven-page thing yeah. sounds just like when you buy carpet. You know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, <laughs> but here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Does anybody know what the difference is? Because I don't. Yes. Between yeah, deductible and out of pocket, and yeah, this I was all under in network. Okay. Yeah. So. D- deductible is at the beginning. And yeah. you, you have to pay the first three hundred, five hundred, seven hundred dollars. Mine's a thousand. And then, then you, then the copay is your is your twenty percent of the what they pay the eighty percent. Yeah. And then once you've maxed, then they add up all the money you've spent out of pocket. Once you reach like five thousand or ten thousand yeah. or something like that, then everything above that is free, with no copays or anything. If you're in network, usually you have to be well, in network. Well, well, there's also an out of network as well, but it, it's incredibly high. But here's my here, here's see that's where you guys get it wrong. It's not free. It's just that you don't have to pay for it. Well, I'll tell you something. I'll, I'll tell you where the insurance company. Oh, what are is crooks. the difference? What's the difference? I'll tell you where the, the I'll tell you where the insurance company crooks. Also, kind of okay. Let me let me explain this to you. I get my insurance. I I get my Medicaid, and then the other twenty percent, the uh, um, what do you call it? The uh, supplemental is the uh, what my wife has at work, her medical plan. Now, they're only going to be responsible for 20% of my bills, okay, because it's a supplemental plan. It's not the major plan. They only have to pay 20%. Right. Do you think they're charging her company 20% of what they normally charge anybody? No, they're getting the full amount of money, okay, uh, somebody's calling. Who who could this be? This late in the game. Hello, who's call? Who's calling? Who's calling? Hey, it's Steve. Yeah, Steve. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Uh, yeah. So, anyway, so no, what I'm saying is, twenty percent. Uh, I uh, I don't understand it. You know why? Why are they charging? Why are they not giving them a break? Because all they're going to have to pay on us is the supplemental. Why aren't they saying that our deductible is twenty percent of the thousand dollars? Policy is a policy. You well, know, whether you're and t- this is how they make their money. They're losing it on someone else. They're making it on you. Yeah. You know. You know why, Alex? Why? Because because I, the thing I have I retired from the federal government. My premium for by Blue Cross did not change when I got Medicare. Right. But I don't have to. They between the two of them, they cover pretty much everything except my drugs. The reason is we're old and we're a high risk. Right. If you're on Medicare, they assume you're high risk, so it's it's the actuaries working into the plan. Now you could not take that plan, take a supplemental Medicare, but you have to do it when you uh, when you're 65, or you, they can uh, turn you down. Well, she was saying she was thinking of talking to the, to her company and saying, why don't you just buy us a supplemental plan? It'll be cheaper for you, and it'll give us more coverage. You know, is it a, is it a small company or a large company? Uh, Citic happens to be a very large company, but they the insurance for uh, the people who are in America working at this particular office are the ones who are being insured because in China I think they're insured you know by Chinese uh, companies. So there, is there fifty people or more? No, or no, the there are only five people. Okay, so they're not. Yeah, if you have more than fifty people. Um, then um, and, you're, and, the, and the spouse is working. The spouse's coverage is primary, Medicare secondary. Well, no, I, I remember when I was working at when I was working at Sirius when I was getting Medicare. Uh, right. If, since Medicare I was wor- or since I was yep. working at a company with more than ten, I think more than ten people or twenty people. Uh, twenty or something. Uh, yeah, right. my my insurance was my primary, and Medicare <laughs> was my supplemental. I can, Rob. Right could probably answer this question uh now you work for a very large company uh do you have a way of choosing what health plan you want my i have a friend who works for uh, there's yeah. about eight of them yeah right exactly so if the, if, yeah so you you could you could choose whatever you wanted to in in something like that uh i you know but and now marjorie's company is a group also but it's a small group uh, it's a small group by virtue of the fact that it's small in America. In other words, the American office is small office, where but it's part of a larger 
bigger company. Citic is probably the major banking company in China. Right. Yeah. Um, is, just, what part do we think about the Chinese bank that we're putting sanctions on? Which one? It's that bank. HSBC, yeah, HSBC, yeah, Marjorie, uh, her, her company does business with them, obviously, because it's a Chinese bank. Is it HSBC? Or? No, 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 they're British. Yeah, that's, they're, no, that, that's HSBC a, is England. No, no, I thought no, it was HSBC. It, it might HSBC be HSBC. is from Hong Kong. Yeah, I, I think, what? Oh, no. aren't they? Oh, I thought they were English. Well, well they, they were under British rule for a long time. Right? Hundred but years. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. But but it wasn't HSBC. It's another bank. It, it, it's a smaller it, bank. I thought it was HSBC. Yeah. But uh, what it could, could be. It could, you, that North could Korea? be right. That's uh, that's Alex the thing. Looking. That's the thought. That's the thought that they're wait, funneling wait, wait. money into North Korea so they cannot deal in the American dollar anymore. It's HSBC. Yeah. Is the it bank. is HSBC. Is it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I looked. Up, I put in Hong Kong Bank, and it says a hey, first thing that came up was HSBC. Oh, it's a Hong Kong Bank, but yeah. I don't think that's the bank that's being sanctioned. I well, I know that I know that that HSBC has they've been going after them for years on one thing and another. You know. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. money launderers. They're money launderers, right? I don't know if that's. I I don't know the full story, but you know, come on, our bankers were crooks too. Look what happened. You know, so I mean, <laughs> well, uh, uh, it, it's kind of like calling no, the pot PMA. calling the kettle black. Our, our bankers, make us, <laughs> our bankers make us feel like crooks. Have you ever deposited over ten thousand dollars in cash? Uh, you, you realize what you have to go through, and they got to fill oh, yeah. out uh, things. And, oh yeah, and, you know, in one day, if you deposit more than ten thousand dollars, yeah, well, because they have to, they have to justify it. To, they have to file it with the government. Right. You know, right. that's to keep. Hey, hey, Alex, you'll make, you'll like the name of the bank. What bank? What's that? The bank of Dan, Dan, like D A N, Dong, D O N G. Oh, is that the name of the bank they're going after? <laughs> Dan, Dan's Dong. Dan's Dong. I'll, 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 post, I'll post a link to the Telegraph newspaper yeah. on Facebook so people can yeah. look it up. Dan Dong. But what was Dan Dong? That's great. That's the uh, bank. Well, that, but read between the lines. This means they're concerned about North Korea getting better weapons, and they're they're they're. Their program of research on missiles is accelerating extremely fast, right. and they're worried about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, so uh, so the uh, they should be. So uh, you know, Kim right, they should be. Kim Jong Un uh, can go ahead and uh, <laughs> uh, send out a Are missile. You send out a missile. <laughs> send up a missile to go target some place like California, and if that thing ever hits. There's just going to be nothing left of North Korea within about a minute and a half. But they yeah. can wipe out South Korea before we can retaliate. It's a problem. We've got 7 yeah. million people right next door to them. Yeah. And right now. Yeah, a lot of American soldiers, too. Right? I got a question for you. How many missiles do you think we got pointed in South Korea's general direction? <laughs> All of them. You know. South, North Korea. Huh? North, yeah. North, a lot. North Korea, a lot. excuse me. North Korea. Uh, let's yes. hope he doesn't use them. Huh? Let's hope he doesn't have to use them. Well, let's hope he doesn't have to <laughs> use them. I, I, let's hope that Trump doesn't have to deal with uh, war situations because, quite frankly, I don't think that's going to be something he's going to be very he's good at. With, this, uh, with the uh, president of South Korea uh, this week, and uh, he just, uh, and I know he just met with a guy from India, and they were hugging each other. Yeah. South Korea is tonight. They had dinner together at the White House. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, big, the South Korea guy's new too, though. He's brand yeah. new in the job because the other lady was corrupt. Yeah. Uh, Steve, oh. uh, you called. Do you have anything to say about this? Or, oh, do, do, do I? Yeah. No, actually, I was. I've been listening more to the reruns because my schedule's been funny. But I wanted to mainly call to say hi and let you then thank you again for having such a you know the panels and. Because it helped me get through the hospital, and my leg is doing real well. Oh, good, good. I just, I, I just wanted to call and mostly just say hi and let you know how glad I am that you're all still there, and everybody was very supportive, and it would really help me to, to get through the hospital. Yeah, you know? so you're pretty much through with it? I mean, is the leg okay now? Yeah, yeah, it's good. It, it, it's still a little swollen, but that's just because yeah. I use it a lot, and that's just... It, it'll it'll um it looks it looks good it yeah. looks steve, really good this so. is no, steve this is no longer the citizens panel it's now death panel 
Yeah. This is our death panel. Death well, actually, you promised hey, death panels with Obamacare. <laughs> I, I got to tell you, this is this is, and this is just sort of an aside, but just for fun, I have to mention. <clears throat> and Alex, I know you know all about this. This is I'm I'm speaking with you on a, a microphone on a telephone that has a red instead of black stamp on it for the phone nuts out there know what that means it's stamped october 1946 your phone yes how do you plug that so, thing in there's no, nowhere to plug it in anymore is there i i, I have it into my uh my, my router and my, my well, modem well i know you do I, I know do you that. do that but you had to rewire it to do that didn't you uh a friend of mine helped me with this it's kind of a reconstructed old 302 set but it's basically the Bakelite, the old Bakelite phone. Yeah, well, those were the phones that never broke. That's the reason why yeah. when you were at, mad at your wife or your or somebody, oh, no. you yeah, would you, put, you would rip the phone out of the wall and throw it against the uh, 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 halfway across the room. Thing never broke, right? No, no. It could probably kill people before it would uh, would break, right? It and, could. And, it could. and and then all those of a sudden they started should. coming out with these pussy phones, and now you know you drop them and they break. Princess phone. Yeah, they break. Yeah. You know, the uh, those phones require 48 volts uh, uh, DC, uh, and uh, but the things that we plug into the wall aren't uh, aren't that, are they? Well, and, you know, the uh, reason why we changed everything in phones, now. the reason we changed everything in phones is because the hackers learned how to beat the phone company. Mm -hmm. You know, that's true. Uh, for hey, remember MCI wasn't even a, a legitimate. I used to rip off MCI all the uh, time. Everybody right? ripped off go. MCI. That was, one got of some, huh? that was one of Steve Jobs' uh, early flights. No, what he did. What he, no, no, what, the phone no what he and Wozniak were involved in were the black boxes and the blue boxes. Oh, yeah, right. that was early. Yeah, now yeah. The, the blue box was a thing you just put on your phone, and uh, what it did is it. It, the phone company in those days the, knew you were tone. making a call, right, and a, a call far away because there was a lowering of resistance in the phone line. And what these things did was right. keep the resistance exactly the same, so you were always kind of on the hook, as it were. And then the, yep. then the black boxes actually were able to go around stuff. I think it was Wozniak. No, it wasn't Wozniak. It was another guy. They called him Captain Crunch. And Captain Crunch cereal had this him, yeah. whistle that they put in every box of Captain Crunch, and they found out if you blew into it in the phone, you got your phone call for free. Yeah, you got your yeah. phone call for free. A friend of mine right. had a signal generator. Uh, you know, he was a ham radio operator. He had a signal generator, and he used to produce that twenty-six hundred meg uh, to yeah. uh, tone. Uh, to, yeah, to get yeah, yeah. Free calls. Yeah, right. And so he, what happened was the phone company suddenly realized we're going to be had if we don't start doing something. And that's why we went close. <laughs> why, why all of a sudden digital came along, they went digital. And, and there's no way, you don't have to worry about making a free phone call at all anymore because you can call almost anywhere in the, in the United States now for free. Or not free, but... Yeah, me with yeah. The, this, is, this is VoIP. This is Cablevision VoIP. And yeah. i got to tell yeah. you, um, if I want to call... You know, France or Germany, at least the European countries, yeah. it's two cents a minute. If I call a cellular phone, it's like a nickel a minute. And Skype, you can do the same thing. But anyway, the point is that it, uh, it's all it's all changed. I mean, that we're today we are celebrating the tenth anniversary, or yesterday maybe, of the iPhone. Yeah. Uh, and oh, it's yeah, hard I to believe that. that it's been that it that it's only been ten years. And I still have the wow. same plan. <laughs> I still have the same. Yeah. Oh, I still have the same <laughs> hey. plan too. Yeah. yeah, they and they hate me for it because yeah, I've got uh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, I, I I changed plans, but I still have my original cellular number, which I now have an LG smartphone on an Android. Um, I have had that number for almost twenty years. Wow. Well, I I yep. used to have a number at work that I call forwarded from my my cell phone would call forward. To that number, and and yeah. uh, that number would call. Uh, so they, they call that number. It would call forward to my cell phone, and I did that so that I would have mobility 
uh, and not have to lose the number. I still have that same phone number at work. I just don't use it for much. Right. Yeah. 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 But anyway, so now that we have the iPhone here is 10 years old, and I can't believe it went from 3.5 inches to the 7 incher I have in my hand. Is it 7 inches now? No, I don't know. It's not, it's it's five much, and right? seven, yeah, seven. six nine or something. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, uh, and uh, I thought this was going to be too big, but I really love the size of this phone because I can do a lot on. I it. love my LG. I love my the the thing I like better than iOS with with the Android is you can open the thing up and get into it. I could cha- I could get a new battery. I could. I, I'm not confined by yeah. all that okay. Apple. Uh, 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 Rob. Can you hear me, Rob? I think Rob may be yeah, almost. I hear you. A, it looks like you're almost asleep. You. It's it getting to be no, that. No, I'm just looking at my phone. Oh, I, I see. Uh, uh, my question I is: I hate my Android. Phone. Uh, well, what phone do you have? That's what I was going to ask. I have both. This is my iPhone, and I also have an Android. I just got a uh, maybe a, a month ago. I've got a yeah, seven, a Galaxy S seven, and I freaking despise that. Is phone. it is that through the company? Get an LG. Well, no, yeah. hold on a second. Uh, hold on a second, Steve. I, it, I don't like the OS. I like my it, Motorola. He doesn't like the Android system. So, uh, it, is nope. that is that through work? Is that why you have the Android? Well, I could have gotten a, an iPhone, but the 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 Android was cheaper. Yeah. So I figured, oh, let me go with the cheaper phone because it's a work phone. I don't use it that much, but I, I find that I use it for nothing now. Well, because... I used to use it a little bit when I had like an old iPhone 5. Yeah. yeah. But now that it's this new phone, it sits and I never use it. Well, if the phone rings, I answer it. But past that, you got to log in to your fucking iPhone, your, your phone in order to mute it. But what kind Rob, of shit is this? Stick your finger on the little button. Yeah. Here's the isn't isn't the um, uh, Android like just so much more flexible where you can open it, and change the battery, and you know that, what? Isn't that a, who who gives you, a shit? Who gives a shit? What? I had one of these phones for three years and they it never went out here? of juice. You see That's this here? Point. This this is a clock radio. I don't want it to be a refrigerator. I don't want it to. I don't want to drive it around. I want to. I want a phone that I want it simple. I don't need all of this flexibility because it doesn't get me anywhere or get me right. anything. It's more Good complex. Point. Good point. It, it doesn't do. It, it. It's not as. If you compare apples to apples, then pardon the pun. The Apple yeah. phone is just easy to use. <laughs> it's mindless. Yeah. Hey, I, I was at the DMV today. I'm watching TV, sitting in a chair, watching TV on my phone. Uh, you know, a, a few years ago, this would have been unheard of. And yep. Uh, yep. But, you know, I used to have this phone. Uh, the company started with an N, and they got bought out by Sprint. And it had a Nokia. walkie No, no, no. It had a walkie. It was a. Uh, it wasn't Next just. Nextel. Nextel, yeah. Nextel. I, yeah. Hey, I got, a great, I got a great trivia question for you. Yeah. Nokia. Which is a uh, Norwegian company, Swedish yeah, company. Some, yeah, yeah. Uh, what did they start out as when they first I went into business? I say this. I don't know. They were a lumber company. That's now, right. It, I remember you, you, you saying that. And now, now here, now what was their second company? They went from lumber to something else. They, don't w- they were lumber in like the mid 1800s. Okay. Wow. Then in about 1912, they went into another business making galoshes. Okay, oh and they became God. they became the largest uh, 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 cre- builder or whatever manufacturer of galoshes oh, in the galoshes. world. Wow. Okay. Wow. All I right. Didn't now know. wait a minute. Let me take it one step <laughs> further. And then finally, one <laughs> yeah. thing led to another. They did some stuff during World War II that had to do with rubber and things like that. And all of a sudden, one day they decide to go into the uh, self, you know, the uh, phone, uh, portable phone business, and become gigantic. They were at one point they were the biggest company in the world, and uh, you just yeah, say to huge, yourself, yeah. you know, what day did they yeah. wake up and say, you know, it's better than lumber? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, 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 like that. What so uh, do you know? Buick, lumber. Buick used to make uh, bathtubs. That was their first thing. Was bathtubs, and then they put a steering wheel on it and a couple yeah, of wheels. You know, and the General, uh, General Weston made World War II the liners of the helmets. Who was that? Wow. General, General Weston, 
General Western. No. Do you know? Do you know what IBM uh, uh, did during World War Two? Uh, they uh, they uh, they uh, they had a uh, used their, their computing systems, which were a little they were punch cards at that time, uh, and sold them to Hitler so he could keep track of all the people in the concentration camps. So when you buy an IBM, oh think God. about that wow. one, yeah. you know. That's why I got mad. <laughs> That's no, why you got mad. Wow. Wow. Phil remember this, and Alex. Yeah. The great big, huge brick cell phones. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh. It looked like you could smash somebody in the face with it. <clears throat> and then they, and the first ones like that got away from that were the Motorola's, the flip phones, and right. the reason they did the flip is everybody watched Star Trek, and it was like, you know, it was like a, uh, a what do you call it? Yeah, the communicator. The communicator. My cell phone was permanently installed in the car. My antenna was on the roof. Yep, yep. A big box in the trunk, and I had a handset yep. in the console that had a uh, keypad. Well, in the it. first one and I ever had was actually a cell phone, but it was hardwired into the car. Yeah, hard yeah. My, my, my horn... Right. It set up my horn to honk if I got a phone call. Yeah. <laughs> Remember the old mo mobile operating does old. Well, they, we, they can, run, we can, we can, we can, we can, we can, we can reminisce about all of this, but unfortunately, we've run out of time. Yeah. Uh, I, I thank the panel tonight. Good show tonight, folks. We had a good time, and nobody got hurt. Phil Meyer, thank you. I've yet, he actually at some point almost had to admit the the Mika Brzezinski thing by Trump was bad form. He will. Uh, it's only because I think she's hot. Yeah, uh, Tim, <laughs> thank you for calling. Steve, of course, uh, thank Thanks, you. Alex. Thank you so much uh, to uh, uh, Mike and uh, uh, our, our, our our friend our friend uh, Kevin, and of course the fabulous Rob Alfano who makes every single Citizens Panel. Wonderful. Thank you. I appreciate Robin, cool. it. Okay. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Wave goodbye, okay? And say goodbye to All the right, people night, out night. there. Okay. Night, night. Nighty night, everybody. On you. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's our uh, that's our panel for tonight. And, uh, uh, you know, I have a good show tonight. Really good show. I and mean, a good panel. And, uh, 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 you know, uh, if you stay tuned, there'll be more of that. With the intersection with Jack and Amy as they continue with citizens' panels and discussing all the things that are going on in the world. Meanwhile, I am Alex Bennett, and I will see you again tomorrow. Same time, same station in life, and in the meantime, should you happen to come upon her. Wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. Uh, tell her I love her, okay? Bye.